here anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's all a jigsaw, isn't it? <laughs> Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. Good morning, you guys. I am here beside a couple of well shorn Romney sheep. We're here on a shearing course with the Irish Sheep Shears Association. Roy Collier and world finalist Dennis O'Sullivan are taking it. Definitely very excited for this. While I may be a decent shearer, I still have a good bit to learn about shearing. And the two boys, Roy and Dennis, are both better shearers than me, and they're more experienced, and crucially too, they're experienced instructors. So I want to come to a course and get a bit of training off them. Learning one or two little things that'll put you up a couple of sheep an hour, that's gonna allow you to shear faster, shear easier, and make more money for the rest of your shearing career. That's why it's so important to keep coming to shearing courses and keep trying to improve. Well, I said I'd do a vlog and bring you along for the day. Let's see how we get on. I'm just holding her head against my leg. Straighten my leg, you look at me toe. This one, the right here seems to start feeling a bit awkward because all my weight's up here. So that's telling you, look, my foot came off the ground. So when my foot comes off the ground there, that means moving. Yeah. All the way to the flank. Okay. Now, do you see this floor here? Right, we're gonna we're gonna change that a wee bit now for the next block. When you come out here to the start your hand piece, yeah. I know you're normally starting here. Yeah. I want you to start there. Right. Just push the top tooth just to the line where there's where the wool has been taken off the last time. Yeah. And down. Yeah. And do the same now. This one. Whoa. See the way you, you're automatically wanting to start here. Right. Start you want to start down lower. Always just about that top tooth. You should just about see that every time. And that's your guide to say you're full. Yeah. Okay. And I'll let her head fall through this way. Yeah. Now we step further back now with your right leg. Bring the sheep with you. That's not too bad now. We're getting there. That's far enough. Perfect. So two sharp blows across her belly now. That's down. We'll try and go across this way. Yeah. So one, two. Like, the thing is, you have to remember, like if a sheep, if a sheep is anyway wrinkled, look, yeah. and if you come in this way, you're slicing the wrinkles. Like, whereas if you come the sheep, yeah. okay. and if you come across the wrinkles, yeah. save. But if you're coming down like this, you're gonna cut. Don't do that, I kind of just put her in at my knees there. I want to put that blow down like that. Yeah. Instead of this one coming across, you're kind of come down over the shoulder. Yeah. And what that does then is you eliminate that ridge. So down the way. Down the way. You eliminate that ridge. And then you're kind of coming across here then. Build that up there for that. So that gives you, if you can get that blow like that, then you have a clean perpendicular line. If you want to hit that, yeah. you go straight out. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. The high shoulder. So high, yeah, so once it's, it's from the turn, like this, yeah. from the turn, get that shot over, leg up, release the legs. Yeah. See the way you can see her there, she flattens. Yeah. Down. For the high as you can. Yeah. And down. And down. Get that angle where you start. Yeah. Kind of as far as the brisket does, it's straight in. Perfect. Well, at least that should all be gone. Yeah. That should yeah. be gone with the neck. Yeah. Better neck, yeah. If you do your neck right, yeah. that should be all gone. You should be, you should be coming in there anyway. Yeah. 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 It's all a jigsaw, isn't it? <laughs> Dennis had a look at me and already he's gotten false with my last shoulder. And the key thing is, is when you get a little tip or two, you have to latch onto it. And I'm going to ride it down and I'm going to work on it for the rest of the day. Hopefully I might get, he'll, they'll figure out another couple of things wrong. But it's those little things and you have to just find them and fix them one at a time. So while the shearing course is going on, we also have a wool handling course going on. 
and we've got a couple of people in that. It's been taken by Katie O'Sullivan, Dennis's wife, a, a very good Scottish wool handler. She's in the background here looking at me funny. <laughs> Put your hands up in the air. <laughs> How's the wool-handed horse going? Yeah, it's fun. You seem to be learning. Yeah, there's so much behind the scenes. Mm. Well, well, that's no what I'm going to throw later. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Wait out till like, you know, a few more hours. Get a good sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Same with me with the sharing. Wait till you get a good one. And then edit it. And yeah. more editing. More and more editing. Filters as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with Roy, chairman of the association and instructor. And it seems to be having a good day today. Are you happy with it? Yeah, we're going well. We have yeah. a, a nice turnout and um, varying levels of ability, but uh, big improvements this morning. Big improvements this morning. I think so. Yeah. How important is it for young shears and shears of any age to go to courses? Uh, I'm at it a long time and I'm still learning. And that's the secret with the game. No matter how long you're in it, there's always more you can learn. Some little trick, some little tweak. People will be commenting on my videos to be surprised, or even farmers will be surprised to hear me go to a course. They'd say, oh, sure, you've nothing more to learn on shearing. But I would say to them that I actually have more reason for me to go to a course as much as anyone because like, even when you get to, say, a senior level, it's so hard to find what else you need to improve on. But I'm still not as good as you or Dennis. So you really, I, that's why I want to keep going to a course at least for a year. Yeah, no, and you're dead right. You, you, you see a beginner there and they know nothing, but you can turn them from knowing nothing into being able to shear a sheep in a day or so quickly. to get to the next stage where you were at a couple of years ago senior with a decent speed and then to get the next bit after that that's that's really easy mm. that's the easy bit but that's where the money's made yeah to learn the basics and then fine tune fine tune fine tune beautiful Up to some woolly headed Romney lambs now. With these lambs, you really need to get low. You want to get down to their level. So, this is where bending and moving your hips really comes into play. You want to push that leg straight, start with the top glute at the start of, of the sock, and you're coming in right to the flank. So, right from there, right in. Up to yourselves guys, some people will follow through with that flow, so they'll start here and they'll follow right through. That's completely up to yourself, that's personal preference. If you want to do that, all well and good. So you're working your belly down, clean off, here, clean, way out, into the crutch, out. When you get low to that lamb, so either pull, push it to the flank again, or push it all the way, depending on what you want. The main thing on the next blow is that you're starting with your heel low and you're filling that up with your backbone, backbone, one either on the other side of the tail, and that's you done. Or up the head, clean off the head, roll her up, clean off that section, straight up under the neck, cheek blow, that shoulder blow, sheep pops out, low to the sheep, one, two, three on the shot, one, one long blow. Too long blow. Take a third one if you can. That's you here. Clean off your cheek. Let the sheep's legs go down over the shoulder, in the knees down. That makes the sheep smaller. Stretch her out. One, two, three. That should be you. Okay. All with me. The main thing is, guys. Be conscious of those hamstrings, stay away from them if you can at all. Right, so the course is over, but you can't go onto a farm without first talking to the farmer. 
Dave, first of all, thanks for having us. No, Carl, you're welcome, yeah. Of course went well. Yeah, yeah, happy enough, happy enough, thank God. What do you like about Romneys? There's not too many of them around Mayo. <laughs> no, no, there's not many, yeah. I'd say we're the furthest west with Romneys now. You work a job too, and you shear, yeah, and you're farming, so in enough time in the you day. You don't have time, time to be out looking yeah. up their hole every day, like. So, <laughs> we'll leave them at it, just spread them around the farm, around the paddocks, and drive around once a day, look at them and lambing. Yeah. How long are you breeding them for? This is my second crop of lambs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not, not too long, of, so. Yeah, yeah, so. No, I have built a fine shed here, and you see where the course was. Lambing down in it, it was just... Yeah. All night. Yeah. Oh, so you were lambing inside first. First, yeah. Yeah. And I've gone. You're like stuffed this. Yeah. yeah. So you want to kind of have the wool right too. Have yeah. You? And, and you're on the wool council as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm on the wool council. Yeah. And Tell us a wee bit about that. Yeah, so this is newly formed there um, at the start of the summer. As part of the ISSA, the Shearing Association said we said we'd make a conscious decision to try it and showcase what we can do with wool like. yeah. and eventually the price might come up if we look after the wool because the price can't get much worse no, so we're thinking if we can like the wool council was set up earlier in the year and there's a few different stakeholders the IFA are involved but the thing everyone is, has the same goal they want to improve everyone the price of wool everyone a bit. thinks yeah. it can't get any better or it can't get any worse mm. but it can actually get worse yeah we'd have to pay to we'd have to away. pay to get rid of it because yeah. it's actually classified as a category three waste product at the moment and that's one of our main goals as uh, the Irish Wool Council to try and see can that be um, removed. Put in the work and look forward and that's try, it like yeah try and get from A to B. Everyone thinks it's going to be done overnight and sure nothing's done overnight. So just, yeah we're going to have to work a bit. Yeah. You know? Brilliant. Good stuff. Uh, Carl thanks for coming we appreciate you awesome. coming down. Hope you enjoyed the vlog. See you for the next one.